Hello, I'm Dr. Sarah Bullard, the Director of Psychology at Gaylord Hospital and the Gaylord Center for Concussion Care. In this two-part series, we will focus on concussion management. In the second part of the series, we look at factors associated with rehabilitation and return to play. As a neuropsychologist, the way that I assess somebody who's had a concussion is I interview them to really understand the nature of what happened, the nature of the injury, their background history. Then I do paper and pencil tests and I'm looking at someone's attention, their concentration, their processing speed, reaction time, memory, visual memory and verbal memory. And then executive functioning. Can you multitask? Can you see the big picture? Can you problem solve? And then after we have this data, I take the results, I compare them to others of the same age, and then we make a plan. Are we trying to get you back to school? What do we need to do in terms of accommodations at school? Might you need some sort of cognitive therapy? Might you need vestibular therapy if it hasn't already been recommended? And those are all things that we're thinking about. Very often, if there's balance issues, then we will do a lot of very different balance tasks. We also will incorporate keeping your eyes focused on targets when you're doing that because very often that combination of using your eyes for balance and your feet for balance connecting to the floor can be where the problem lies with a lot of our concussion patients. So we combine those two things. And this is especially important for things like hockey where you have to have a quite a bit of balance to be able to maintain your skating on the ice. And then you have to also be able to see the puck and watch it as it's moving, which can involve the ocular motor function. And then you also have to know what's the play, where am I supposed to be? You're also assessing the situation on the fly so you know where you're supposed to be for the play, but you also can see the puck's coming here so I have an opportunity to do something. Those activities all together can be very challenging for an athlete to return to after a concussion. So we try to, as much as we can, simulate that within our clinic. And then I take that data and then I make my recommendations off of that. So if the student has poor attention now or their processing speed is slow, well then that has direct implications for what I'm gonna recommend in terms of the return to learn, getting back to school. Also in terms of return to play, work hand in hand with the physical therapist, trying to get an individual rehabbed as quickly and as safely as possible so that we can return them to, to sports as well. Everywhere we look, we see that literature suggests that initially brain rest is important. How long that brain rest needs to be is dependent on the student themselves. Some concussions last for only an hour, a day, two or three days. About 80 to 85 percent of concussions will resolve in about two to three weeks. So in terms of the effects of a concussion upon someone's life, it's varied. For the majority of people, it doesn't have that much of a long-lasting effect upon their lives. And that's important to really keep in mind. For those that have a more prolonged recovery, as you might imagine, if you're struggling with nausea and dizziness and chronic headaches, and you're irritable, and you're not sleeping well, and you're having trouble focusing, now you're having trouble at school. We may not even be able to have you at school. Now you can't see your friends, and then you're at risk for becoming depressed, demoralized, can't play in, in sports for a while. Very often we tell people who've had a concussion, don't use your cell phones, don't text your friends, don't play video games, because those things are very taxing and take a lot of energy for your brain to manage. So if you have someone who maybe can't go to school yet because they're not able to from their concussion and their home, unable to play video games, unable to connect with their friends on Facebook or use a computer or their phone, then it can, it can become very uh, difficult. So many people ask about what are the long-term effects of a concussion. We have what we call the miserable minority of people, that 10 to 20 percent, who don't resolve in three weeks. And those are the people that have some extended issues and could spend two, three months trying to recover from their concussion. In terms of, of what you can do to help avoid a concussion, one is conditioning, conditioning, conditioning. Making sure that you are fit before you get out into your particular sport. Strengthen the neck muscles and the upper body muscles that will help keep the head supported so when the athlete receives a hit, their head isn't pushed back and forth in a whiplash type style. Also, making sure you get a good night's sleep. Don't think that you can just function on a few hours and that that may not slow you down or impact your reaction time. 
Being hydrated. I find that most of my athletes are not hydrated. They are not properly hydrated and they have terrible eating habits. So if your blood sugar is dropping or you're very tired, you put yourself and your teammates at risk. Keeping an eye towards safety at all times. So, you know, not being a little bit more of a daredevil than you should be to make sure that you're doing the things the way you were taught. For instance, in football, you don't want to lead with your head. What I notice a lot is that the practices are not as structured as play is. And so you actually, I see athletes far more offered injured in a practice than on the field. Because it's hockey pucks are going this way and that way, and it's just not as controlled. So really thinking about how you're structuring your practices for your players so that they're as safe as possible, and really discouraging any type of horseplay, and really making sure that everybody's being a good sport. In terms of safety gear, this, this, is, this is a tricky one because in truth, there's no safety gear that's gonna prevent a concussion. What we do know is that helmets will reduce the likelihood of a skull fracture. So, helmets are excellent. Will they prevent a concussion? Not necessarily. Will they help mitigate the severity of a concussion? Absolutely. The research is still new in terms of mouth guards and their ability to, to mitigate the effects of concussion. I know that there was a dentist working with the Patriots looking at mouth guards and whether or not they can reduce the impact, especially from hits that come from the chin. Mouth guards are helpful and I think that certainly they're going to prevent a number of injuries. The research is still out whether or not they're really going to mitigate the effects of a concussion or not. But they certainly will help in terms of with teeth. <laughs> If you have a coach that suspects that your child has a concussion and they have taken them out of the game, be grateful that you have somebody who not only has the training, but is willing to go to the length to help protect your child. If they were to return to a sport before they were ready, all those challenges that I just spoke about would become difficult for them to manage and it would put them at a vulnerable place to be re-injured. As we get more and more concussions and as an athlete sustains, two, three, four concussions, it becomes harder for them to recover from them. And yes, it's a pain in the neck to then have to take your kid to the doctor and get them checked out. But again, it's better to be safe than sorry. There are consequences. And I think it's really important to keep that in mind and to always err on the side of caution. If we were to come upon a student athlete who's sitting quietly in their classroom and no one is around, they might actually say, you know, I feel pretty good. I can go back to practice today. And then we start layering on some of the, the stimulations and challenges that they'll face, such as the noise in the rink, um, being able to s deal with the constant motion of the puck and things like that. And we'll, we'll start to see where they really aren't ready yet. They'll start to get a headache. They'll start to feel dizzy. They'll just really start to struggle. So we start from a very low process where they're maybe just doing one of those tasks. And as they're able to tolerate it, then we start stacking them on so that by the time they can do all the things we are challenging them to do, we're pretty confident that when they, we send them back to practice, they're ready and they're going to be able to go through the return to play steps successfully.